Okay, so let's continue solving non-homogeneous differential equations by using the method of undetermined coefficient. So here we have a differential equation, and the non-homogeneous term is an exponential function. So the first step in the method of undetermined coefficients is try and find the general solution to the homogeneous version of this. And we know from the last video, or we could probably rederive it really quickly, the homogeneous uh, solution is going to be c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the negative x. So now the next step is we need to try and guess a particular solution that kind of mimics this non-homogeneous term. So here we have a constant times e to the 3x, so let's just try some constant times e to the 3x. And the idea is we're going to plug this in and try and find a value for a that will satisfy this differential equation. So the first derivative, y prime, that's going to be 3 times a e to the 3x. The second derivative, y double prime, that's going to be 9a e to the 3x. And if we plug all these in, we get that the second derivative, 9a e to the 3x, minus the first derivative, 3a e to the 3x, minus 2 times y, or 2 times a e to the 3x, all of that has to be equal to 2 e to the 3x. Now, notice that every single term has an e to the 3x term, so let's just simplify this up a bit by dividing by e to the 3x on both sides, which would mean that this would go, this would go, this would go, and this would go. So now we're left with 9a minus 3a minus 2a, or just 4a, is equal to 2, which means that a is equal to 1 half. So, the particular solution, 1 half e to the 3x, will satisfy this differential equation. Now, the main takeaway point with this example is, if your non-homogeneous term is an exponential function, then you should probably guess like a, a scaled version of that exponential function because we know when we take the derivatives, we'll recover that function in each term. And when we plug in all the derivatives, we want them to cancel out and leave that function remaining. So essentially, if you ever see an exponential function, then guess something of that form. So now let's go on to another example. Now let's go on to y double prime minus y prime minus 2y all of it is equal to 5 times sine of x. So here our non-homogeneous term is a sinusoidal term. So we know that this will have the same homogeneous solution, so let's just try and go ahead and guess the particular solution. You may be thinking, okay, let's guess a constant times sine of x. And if we were to do this, we'd find that the first derivative is equal to a times cosine of x, and the second derivative is equal to negative a sine of x. Now if we were to plug all of these in, we need to find a value of a that holds, that, sorry, that makes this equation hold for all values of x. But notice if we plug all these terms in as we have them here, we'd have a sine term minus a cosine term minus a sine term is equal to just a sine term. So here we have sine and cosine on one side, and here we just have sine on the right-hand side. And these have to hold for all values of x. So this by itself won't cut it because we're left over with some cosine term. Which means, let's try and add a cosine term to our particular solution because we know we're going to get cosines in the derivative, but hopefully if we include a cosine term originally, they'll hopefully cancel out and we'll be left over with no cosine terms. So if we take the derivative, we'll get uh, minus 
b times sine of x, and the second derivative is minus b times cosine of x. Now let's just go ahead and plug in all these derivatives into this differential equation. So this may take a bit of space, but here we have the second derivative, negative a sine of x minus b cosine of x minus the first derivative a cosine of x minus b times sine of x My, I'm just going to continue down here minus 2 times y which is just a sine of x plus b cosine of x all of that has to be equal to 5 sine of x. So let's simplify this left hand side up by grouping together all the sine terms and grouping together all the cosine terms. So if we group together all the sine terms we get sine of x times negative a plus negative b times negative 1 so just plus b plus a times negative 2, so minus 2a. Now if we group all the cosine terms, we get cosine x times negative b plus negative a plus negative 2 times b. And all of that has to be equal to 5 sine of x. Now to make this relationship a bit more explicit, I'm going to rewrite this right hand side as 5 sine of x plus 0 times cosine of x. It doesn't change the value of the right hand side because we're just adding 0. But notice, in order for this equality to hold for all values of x, we're going to have, that means that the coefficients in front of sine here are going to have to equal the coefficients in front of sine here which means that negative a plus b minus 2a or just negative 3a plus b all of that has to be equal to 5. Likewise the coefficients in front of cosine here must be equal to the coefficients in front of cosine here so we get that negative 3b minus a has to be equal to 0. So now we have to solve uh, what a and b are. This tells us that a is equal to negative 3b. And if we were to plug that value into here, we get that negative 3 times negative 3b, or just 9b plus b is equal to 5, which means that 10b is equal to 5, or that b is just equal to 5 over 10, which is 1 half. And if b is 1 half, then a, is negative 3 times 1 half, which is just negative 3 over 2. So we found the values of a and b for our particular solution that will help satisfy this differential equation. And if we plug them in, then we get that our particular solution is negative 3 over 2 times sine of x plus 1 half times cosine of x. Now what's the takeaway point here? When the non-homogeneous term is a sinusoidal term, then you want to guess a particular solution that includes both sine and cosine. Even though there's no co even though there's no cosine term here, we found that our particular solution needed a cosine term. Because when we take the derivatives, we'll get cosine terms and we want them to cancel out. So those were two nice examples. Well, let's just try a third example, and this is a bit of an interesting example. Here our differential equation is second derivative of y minus the first derivative minus two times y. All of this is equal to two e to the three x plus five sine of x. Now hopefully this should be very familiar to you because this first term here was the first uh, non-homogeneous term we dealt with. And we found that the particular solution for that was 1 half e to the 3x. And the second term here was the second 
non-homogeneous term we dealt with. And we found that this was a particular solution. So let's just go ahead and let's just try and guess. Well, if we know the particular solution for this term and the particular solution for this term, what would happen if we were to add those particular solutions together? Essentially, let's try and test out y p is equal to one half e to the three x, our first particular solution, plus negative three over two sine of x plus one half cosine x. Essentially, the sum of our two particular solutions. Now let's try and take the derivatives and see if this will work. So the first derivative of this, uh, that's just going to be one half times three, so three over two e to the three x minus three over two cosine of x minus one half sine of x. And the second derivative, that's just going to be nine over two e to the three x uh, plus three over two times sine of x minus one half times cosine of x. Now let's plug all of these derivatives in up here and see if it holds. So this may take some time, but we get the second derivative, nine over two e to the three x plus three over two sine of x minus one half cosine of x minus the first derivative, which is all this, three over two e to the three x minus three over two cosine of x minus one half sine of x minus two times y, where y is just one half e to the three x minus three over two sine of x plus one half cosine of x. All of this has to be equal to e to the three x plus five sine of x. So now let's simplify this left hand side by grouping all the terms together. So let's group all the exponential terms together. So e to the three x times nine over two plus three over two times negative one, so minus three over two, and plus one half times negative two, so minus one. And those are all the exponential terms. So now let's group all the sine terms. So we have sine of x times three over two uh, to plus negative one half times negative one, so plus one half plus negative three over two times negative two, so plus three. And let's group all the cosine terms. So cosine times negative one half plus negative three over two times negative one, so plus three over two plus one half times negative two, so minus one. And all of that has to be equal to this up here. So now let's simplify this up. We're going to get that we have e to the 3x times 9 over 2 minus 3 over 2. That's just 6 over 2, or just 3 minus 1. That's just 2. Then we get plus sine of x times one, 3 over 2 plus 1 half is just 2. Plus 3 is 5 plus cosine of x times negative one half plus three over two, which is just one, minus one, which is zero. So we can just cancel that out. All of that has to be equal to two e to the three x plus five sine of x. And we see that they are indeed equal, which means that if you, uh, we found that that if you have a differential equation with a sum of non-homogeneous terms. 
And if you know what the particular solution is for each term, then the particular solution for the entire differential equation will be the sum of those particular equations. Because here we found that the particular, sorry, the particular solution for this is just the particular solution for this term plus the particular solution for this term. Now, let's think about why that is. And let's go back to our like abstract math focusing on linearity and linear operators. So let's just say that we have our differential equation and we're just going to rewrite it as a linear operator acting on y. Just a shorthand notation. And we know that this is equal to two non-homogeneous solutions, q1 of x plus q2 of x. And we found, just from working with these individually, that if we have two particular solutions, yp1, such that if you plug yp1 in the differential equation, we get q1 of x. And we found another particular solution, yp2, such that if you plug it into the differential equation, l acting on yp2, we get the other particular solution, q of x. So if we were to test out this differential equation acting on yp1 plus yp2. Now here we can just invoke our property of linearity and we know that this is equal to L just acting on yp1 plus L acting on yp2. Our differential equation acting on both of those. And we know that this is just equal to q1 of x plus q2 of x. Which means what the sum of the two particular solutions, yp1 plus yp2, would be a solution to this differential equation. So, basically, if you have a non-homogeneous differential equation that has multiple non-homogeneous terms, essentially what you can do is you can just focus term by term. Like if they had a sum of all different things like exponential functions, sines, polynomials, etc. You can tackle the exponential function separately, the sine function separately, the polynomial separately, and just add all of those particular solutions together to get the true particular solution for the entire differential equation. So, hopefully that made sense, and I'll see you in the next video.